Now we've already established that electron pairs repel each other. And as they repel each other, they take on a variety of shapes. Let's look at those shapes now. Let's look at the repulsion that occurs between two electron pairs, three electron pairs, and four electron pairs. This molecule here has two electron pairs, one here and one there. So when these two electron pairs repel each other, they take on a linear shape. The angle measure is 180 degrees. A great example of this is carbon dioxide. The next molecule has three electron pairs. One, two, three. The way that those three electron pairs get as far apart as possible is by taking on an angle measure of 120 degrees. The name of this shape is trigonal planar. Trigonal because it looks like a triangle and planar because it occupies a single plane. All four of these atoms are in the same plane. Now this next molecule called bent also has three electron pairs. The difference is that this electron pair is a lone pair and this electron pair is a bonding pair. As it turns out, the lone pair takes up more space than the bonding pair and forces this down. So the angle is actually less than 120 degrees. The next molecule called tetrahedral has four bonding pairs. One, two, three, four. Now in an attempt to get as far apart from one another as possible, this shape will occupy all three dimensions. The x, y, and z plane. You might expect the angle measure to be 90 degrees, but it's not. Remember, it's utilizing all three planes. The angle measure is 109.5. Now this next molecule also has four electron pairs. One, two, three, four. The difference is this is a lone pair. This is a bonding pair. As mentioned before, the lone pair takes up slightly more space than the bonding pair. As a result, it forces these atoms down just a little bit. So instead of this angle measure down here being 109.5, it's actually less than 109.5. Similarly, this molecule called bent also has four electron pairs. You can see that two of them, however, are lone pairs. So these two lone pairs, remember taking up more space, will make this angle just a little bit smaller. So we can call it less than less than 109.5. The example that they give is water. Now because water is so important, we're going to actually um, display the real angle. The real angle for water, not true for every molecule, but the real angle for water is 104.5 degrees. So try to commit these shapes and angle measures to memory.